Hi, my name is David Hatton. I'm a developer for IBM Urban Code Deploy, and today we're going to get a little more familiar with resources. We're going to talk about what a resource is more in depth and the different types of tags you can use to better organize your deployments. So starting at the Urban Code Deploy dashboard, we're going to go over to the Resources tab. So here we have a top-level resource group set up with two agents associated with it. In order to deploy to anything using Urban Code Deploy, first you have to create a top-level resource group. These resource groups end up being associated with uh, environments. This is where you're going to mock out what your uh, environment looks like. So one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to st start with tags. So tags allow you to group resources um, based on anything you want. Uh, and using tags, you can deploy to certain resources and control where your deployments are going. So we're going to set up a two-tag system. The way you create tags is when you hover over the resource, you'll notice there's a little tag icon next to it. If you click on that, you'll be brought to this dialog. This is where you can add or create a tag. So I'm going to call this tag blue. It's going to say select a color. And so now this, uh, this agent is tagged with blue. I can make multiple tags and have multiple tags on any given resource. So just to demonstrate that, Right, so now this agent has two different tags. I'm going to name this agent. This is the agent that I've set up for our prod instance. I'm going to call this one green and give it a green color. Okay. So the way I initially associated these, these agents with the resource was by going into the resource actions, go here or here, and selecting add agent. Here's where I can select the agents available to me and I can add agents to the top level resource. So going to our application and going to our environments, we'll see this a similar looking resource tree. So we have this agent is the only agent associated with this environment. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to add another, another resource, the one that we were specifically using for prod. So now, this dev environment has two resources associated with it. Each of those resources has children resources associated with it. These children resources point to components. So the reason that components here are uh, represented as resources is due to the way a, a resource is defined. So a resource is something that represents what is going into a deployment. That includes what's being deployed to, what is being deployed, and the container for all of this. So that's why you see not only agents as resources, not only these base folders as resources, but also components as resources. So a resource is more of a, of a descriptor. Um, it is its own object within Urban Code Deploy, but it, it, is, it is a sort of bucket for uh, what you're going to be deploying. So you'll notice that I can also tag these component resources the same way 
I can tag uh, agent resources and t base resources or top level resource groups. One thing to note is that tags are case sensitive. So notice I have the capital B blue tag, but if I tried to create the lowercase b blue, it's going to be wrong. It'll ask me to create a new tag. So I'm just going to tag the rest of these up. So where is this useful? How, how can we leverage tags? The, way, the place you can leverage them is within your application process. So remember, when you create an application process, you take one of these steps and you associate it with a component and with a component process. One of the options is this, limit to tag. So here I see a list of the tags I've created. So I can choose to limit a deployment to only the blue tags. So now we're going to request a deployment on our dev environment that we've associated both our uh, dev agent and our prod agent with. And we're going to control the deployment using tags. I'm just going to select any arbitrary versions here. It doesn't really matter what we're deploying for this example. So you'll notice it's only running on the one training agent, not the prod training agent. And if once it gets to install, once it gets to the second one, it will also only run on that. So it's only running on resources that we've appropriately tagged. It will not run on any resources that have the that don't have the blue tag. Um, if we look at install images, same darn. Oh right, because I didn't set the second one. That's right. Okay. So in order for that to work for your second, you would also need to limit to tag blue. So let's try that deployment again. And actually, let's see what happens to children of tagged resources that are not themselves tagged. This is kind of half off the rails right here. OK. As long as you have a top level resource tagged or an agent level resource tag, children of that resource do not need to be tagged. So notice I have this base resource tagged blue, but I do not have the children resources that represent the components tagged. However, in the deployment, we'll notice that it is in fact running on that child and again in the install images step. So on both of those steps in the application process, I configured the, the step to only run on resources that have the appropriate tag, which in this case was blue. But as you can see, the children don't. So this, so you only need to tag parents of uh, resources that you wish to deploy. So using tags and other utility steps, you can control where your deployments go. You might want to have half of your resources representing your you know, half of your uh, high availability environment. And in that case, you only want to deploy to half at a time. Um, so this is a way that you can control what gets deployed to. So that's it for today. We talked about using tags to manage your resources to better control your deployments. Thank you for your time.